Assalamualaikum and good morning to all. I am Nisha, an oncologist from the Department of Clinical Oncology here at UMMC. I'm pleased to introduce the next speaker for this morning's breakfast at UM Health webinar. Prof. Wan Zamania is a consultant clinical oncologist and a lecturer with the Faculty of Medicine, University of Malaya. She has a special interest in head and neck cancers, and we are proud to say that she was one of the esteemed investigators in the landmark Keynote 048 study, which led to the use of immunotherapy in head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. Therefore, she is the best speaker to bring us through the next uh, topic for the next talk. It's called Checkpoint Inhibitors, the Changing Treatment Landscape in Recurrent Metastatic Squamous Cell Carcinoma of the Head and Neck. The floor is yours, Prof. One. Well, thank you, Nisha. Um, I'm not sure if I'm the best. Um, I think um, there are other better people to speak, but it's just my turn, so I have to, to speak. So the, I'm Wan Zamania uh, from Clinical Oncology. So today's topic, as what Nisha has mentioned, uh, checkpoint inhibitors, the changing treatment landscape of recurrent or metastatic hair and neck SSC. So the scope today, I'm going to uh, give some brief overview on the head and neck uh, cancer in Malaysia. And then I'll move on to the SCC head and neck of non-NPC because NPC is another topic by its own. And then uh, I'm going to talk on the uh, current uh, treatment um, involving immune checkpoint inhibitor in recurrent or uh, metastatic um, SCC as well uh, on the first line and second line therapy and um, talking about other opportunity for the usage of AV checkpoint inhibitor in the, this uh, type of tumor. And then I'll share one case with you. Uh, head and neck SCC consists of heterogeneous set of uh, malignancies. 90% uh, are squamous cell carcinomas and majority of the, this type of tumor occur in the lip and oral cavity. Uh, it's the fourth most prevalent cancer site among Malaysians and third most prevalent uh, cancer site among the males. Um, the tongue cancer predominant uh, in males up to the age of uh, 65 to 69, um, led by the Malays, followed by the Chinese and Indians. Um, in 2020, Global Can reported about 1,000. 620 cases of head and neck SCC. And um, this type of tumor, excluding NPC, are the 12 most common cancer in Malaysia. Uh, looking at the mutational load in this tumor, uh, we have two heterogeneous. Uh, there are uh, this tumor has uh, are heterogeneous tumors that have two distinct sub uh, subtypes. Um, smoking related as well as HPV, HPV related. And for those HPV related, they usually express a PDL1. And you, uh, these tumors are usually moderately mutated and also highly immunosuppressive. Uh, these are the biomarkers commonly seen in the uh, SEC of head and neck. Um, more, um, mostly are uh, uh, for prognostication, but um, we have now PDL1 that we can target uh, with uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, based on the series of the trials done uh, as a monotherapy or a combination therapy uh, in the treatment of the first line um, therapy, uh, the median overall survival provided was not. Um, great, um, about five to nine months um, in the most series, uh, that indicates only moderate uh, or modest uh, survival. Uh, in 2008, uh, we have a big breakthrough whereby the extreme regime, uh, a combination of cisplatin, carboplatin, or cisplatin or carboplatin with cetuzumab and 5-FU uh, has become a first standard um, standard first-line therapy for recurrent or metastatic uh, that offer median survival of about 10 months uh, versus seven months uh, in, uh, based on that uh, time standard of care. Uh, and since then, extreme regime is commonly used as standard of care comparator in the clinical studies of recurrent or metastatic NSC. 
at the moment where do we stand uh, these are the treatment landscape that has been that we we are seeing uh, from the back before 2008 uh, we only have like single agent or combination of platinum plus uh, 5-FU based chemotherapy as our standard of care. And in 2006, cetuzumab came in as a uh, monotherapy and extreme uh, appear in 2008. Um, and until then, there was nothing. Only up to 2016, um, that immune checkpoint inhibitor came into the, the picture. Um, they have been approved as a second line therapy. And in 2019, uh, we have, based on Keynote 048, we have a breakthrough in the treatment of uh, metastatic hernia SCC, where a combination of embolismab plus chemotherapy um, has become a standard. In Malaysia, we are using this um, Ministry of Health a systemic therapy protocol uh, that was published in 2016. Um, the latest one it should be coming according to our colleagues in uh, Ministry of Health. Um, and we are still, in a way, stuck with uh, platinum 5-FU based chemotherapy as well as methotrexate as monotherapy in the palliative setting. Um, when we compare ours with the international guidelines, for example, MCCN guidelines, um, the NCCN uh, since 2019 has proposed the use of uh, pembrolizumab as monotherapy plus minus chemotherapy for patients, especially with uh, PDL1 expression of CPS score of more than one, uh, one or more, and especially in uh, CPS score of more than 20. And if uh, for second line, if it's not previously used, anivolumab and pembrolizumab is, is being um, proposed for second line. Uh, we have privileged to um, come up with this guideline, a pan-Asian adaptation of EH and S, SMO, H2, CPG for uh, treatment with um, SCC head and neck, uh, which I was one of them involved. And we come up with this um, guidelines uh, suggesting that for those patients with CPS, uh, PDL1 CPS score of one or more, um, the usage of PEMBRO monotherapy uh, or PEMBRO plus uh, chemotherapy in, in the first line. And uh, in the second line, for those um, who, where, who has not have uh, in, uh, PEMBRO in the first line, then nivolumab or pembrolizumab as a uh, second line. Uh, all the others, uh, chemotherapy is still standard. Uh, therapy. Um, immunotherapy and head and neck SCC, I mentioned before that this type of tumor is highly immunosuppressive um, and chemotherapy actually induced tumor, uh, tumor infiltration by my uh, lymphocyte as shown uh, on uh, by illustrated by the picture. Before chemotherapy, you can see the tumor a bit cold and after chemotherapy, there's infiltration of lymphocyte, uh, especially CD8 into the the tumor. PDL1 inhibitor, uh, a PD1 inhibitor, uh, pembrolizumab and nivolumab, um, I mentioned, has been approved for second line therapy in 2016. And higher PDL1 expression is associated with uh, improved response to pembrolizumab. Um, and based on the uh, fact that chemotherapy induced tumor infiltration by the, uh, by the lymphocytes, uh, it is a rational combination partner for NTPD1 uh, to disrupt the tumor architecture and uh, overcome the immune exclusion, and uh, as well as uh, result in antigen shedding and uh, induce rapid disease control. Uh, these are the list of clinical trials uh, that utilize immune checkpoint inhibitor in the first line um, setting. Uh, the only positive trial is Kino 048, where the primary, o uh, primary overall survival was met. Um, the, we, we have quite a good number of patients in this trial as well. Uh, Kino 048 is a study of first-line PEMBRO for recurrent metastatic head and neck SCC. Uh, these are the study design, patient being randomized to 
pembomonotherapy, pembrocosimo, and SRIM. Uh, and the, the, the analyzed, uh, we analyzed the patient based on pembomonotherapy versus extreme and pembrocosimo chemotherapy versus extreme and based on the CPS uh, or image um, PDL1 expression as well. So looking at the overall survival graph, uh, for a patient with uh, on PEMRO versus extreme, um, on, with the PDL1 expression CPS score of 20 and more, the median survival was about 15 months versus 10.7 months. And for P, a CPS score of one or more, median survival was 12 months versus 10 months, which in favor of PEMBO monotherapy. And uh, unfortunately, uh, there's no difference in the uh, progressions uh, free survival, regardless of PDL1 expression. Uh, when we analyze the PEMBO plus chemotherapy versus extreme, the overall survival in the total population, regardless of PDL1 expression, median survival was about 13 months versus 10.7 months. Uh, similar story with the progression free survival, where uh, there's no difference between the uh, PEMBRO plus chemotherapy uh, versus extreme. Um, if we look at the effect of uh, PEMBRO, um, monotherapy versus PEMBRO plus chemotherapy, uh, the PEMBRO, uh, PEMBRO monotherapy offers media survival about 11.5 months versus 10.7 months. And uh, if we add chemotherapy to it, um, the median survival increased to 13 months versus 10.7 months. So most of the overall survival benefit actually carried by PEMBRO-lizumab. Um, the effect of overall survival um, with PEMBRO was also carried um, in the long-term uh, follow-up where the five-year survival of about 14.4 months versus 6.5, uh, sorry, 14% versus 6% uh, is seen in the PEMBRO monotherapy. And in PEMBRO plus chemotherapy, the uh, overall survival of 16 months versus five months um, was observed. Treatment related adverse event wise uh, in PEMBRO mono, as you can see, the tolerability is well, um, well better in PEMBRO monotherapy compared to chemotherapy. And uh, the immune-mediated adverse event uh, wise, uh, the common uh, adverse event seen is hypothyroidism. In PEMBRO plus chemo, however, the adverse event uh, is slightly increased, uh, mainly due to the effect of chemotherapy, uh, but it is not um, highly, uh, how do I say, additional of, uh, additional of PEMBRO to the chemotherapy is still well tolerated um, compared to extreme. Um, there's no additional uh, adverse event there. And uh, for the immune mediated adverse event, hypothyroidism is the, as, as predicted, is uh, one of the main problems. What about other immune checkpoint inhibitor um, with other chemotherapy combination? We have um, PEMBRO plus carboplatin plus Pactexel uh, in the first line, uh, a phase four study by the, uh, by the Australian group. Um, this is phase two study, a uh, patient uh, being um, given PEMBO plus Pactly plus Cabo uh, for chemo for about six months and PEMBO for about two years. And um, most of the patient um, Male com, uh, uh, are males uh, with PDL1 expression uh, about 80% and uh, median age about uh, 64. Uh, the overall response rate about 42.7 uh, with complete response rate about 5%, um, PR rate about 38%, um, and duration uh, of response about 5.5 months. The common uh, treatment-related adverse event is myelosuppression. And as usual, the immune-mediated adverse event uh, uh, is hypothyroidism. Um, what about IO-IO combination? Uh, we have nebolumab plus ipilimumab plus ex versus extreme, um, a combination of 
anti-PD-1 nivolumab with uh, anti-CTLA-4 uh, versus extreme, our standard of care treatment. Uh, the result was uh, announced in SMO 2021. Uh, this study, this is the study design where uh, uh, patient randomized to one to one to nivo plus EP versus extreme. Um, the result with overall survival, however, was not impressive. In all patient randomized, uh, nivo EP versus extreme um, are similar. And uh, if if we look at the PDL one expression, especially in CPS score of more than twenty. There are trends to show that NIVO EP is doing slightly better. However, the statistical uh, significant uh, is it is not statistically significant. Um, what about second line therapy? Uh, we have Keynote 040, uh, a PEMBRO versus standard of care regime chemotherapy, mainly uh, single agent methotrexate, docetaxel, or uh, Cetuzumab, patient randomized one to one to PEMBRO uh, monotherapy versus the standard of care. Um, and in the ITT population, um, median survival was about 8.4 months versus uh, 7.1 months. Um, and the effect is seen across the other um, PDL1 expression where. Um, Media survival with uh, eight point seven months versus uh, ten point and sorry seven point one months in CPS score of more than one and CPS score of more than fifty about eleven point six months versus uh, eight months. Uh, mostly well tolerated with PEMBO compared to standard of care chemotherapy. Um, and because of that, uh, PEMBO was uh, approved in 2016 for second line therapy by FDA. And now I'll move on to another um, image checkpoint inhibitor uh, with nivolumab, a uh, checkmate uh, one for one study uh, in second line, uh, designed similar to uh, checkmate uh, Keynote 040, patient randomized 2 to 1 to nivolumab uh, versus standard of care similar chemotherapy of methotrexate, docetaxel, and cetuzumab. Uh, overall survival at primary analysis, uh, median survival was 7.5 months versus 5 months. And at one year, overall survival rate about 36% versus 16.6%. Uh, at two years, about 17% versus 6%, uh, all in favor of um, uh, uh, nivolumab. Treatment related adverse event wise, more patient experience uh, grade three to four adverse event in chemotherapy compared to nivolumab. So, nivolumab is well tolerated. What else from here? Uh, there are about more than 70 studies registered in clinicaltrial.gov um, combination of image checkpoint inhibitor with other novel agent chemotherapy or uh, image checkpoint inhibitors as well as other um, uh, TKIs or tyrosine kinase inhibitors. In UMMC itself, we have uh, Piper as well as three other uh, studies that doesn't have a um, specific name uh, in uh, Piper in the first line and um, the other three study in the second line setting. Uh, I'm excited to tell you that we Piper is our initiative together with the uh, Cancer Research uh, Malaysia uh, in, co in collaboration with uh, MSD as well as HKL and IKN. It's a study of pembolizumab plus uh, platinum and zemcitabine as first line uh, treatment for recurrent or metastatic head neck SCC. Sorry. Uh, at the moment, we have seven patients. Um, our site has been initiated since September 2022. And so far, we have recruited seven, about seven patients. Uh, HKL and IKN was initiated a few weeks ago, uh, a bit delayed because of the requirement of NMR um, uh, that was not fulfilled before. And then we have a second line study with um, nanatinostat as well as ezabenlimab um, for the uh, head and neck uh, SCC. Um, 
and I'm excited to wait for the LEAP009 and LEAP010 uh, study in first line and second line uh, study combination of um, pembrolizumab with lambatinib. So in conclusion, for the first line, um, at the moment, the treatment scheme has changed from uh, chemotherapy to pembrolizumab as monotherapy or in combination with platinum's 5-FU uh, based chemotherapy with a uh, patient expressing PDL1 uh, with CPS score of one or more as standard of care. Um, and uh, other option with other combination with uh, pembro, platinum, and uh, pachytexel is an alternative to 5-FU based chemotherapy uh, standard of care based on Keynote, zero, Keynote B10. In the second line, uh, Pembro and Nivolumab is recommended after failure of platinum, um, regardless of CPS score, and uh, it offers survival benefit and proven with the uh, long-term follow-up analysis. Uh, combination of um, Immune checkpoint inhibitors, uh, immune uh, ICI, ICI um, is basically at the moment uh, not proven to be benefit, uh, beneficial. And uh, we are waiting for the results of other immune checkpoint inhibitors combination with other novel agent um, to, to see better uh, survival for our patients. Uh, now I will. Uh, share a case that um, was treated um, in, in our center, 44-year-old man, diabetic, heavy smoker, diagnosed with base of tongue CA in April 2020. Uh, at the beginning of pandemic, there was slight delay in the diagnosis because he lives in um, Terengganu and um, because of the travel restriction, he can't come. Uh, eventually, he came and um, he, he was diagnosed with uh, uh, CA tongue with cervical limb node metastasis, uh, metastasis and mediastinal metastasis. He underwent surgery and reconstruction and had CCRT as post-operative uh, uh, treatment. Um, in October 2020, however, he has local recurrence and um, the uh, local recurrence in the uh, fossa of Rosamula, which extend intracranially. Uh, I sent for uh, PDL1 expression. His CPS score was more than 20, I think about 50. And he was started on cisplatin 5 FU pembrolizumab. Uh, however, he developed severe diarrhea after cycle one. So I had to stop his pembrolizumab. So I changed his chemotherapy to uh, cisplatin packet cell pembrolizumab. He tolerated the treatment well. And PET scan after cycle four shows stable disease in the base of skull with reduced FDG activity um, and resolved FOR mass. Um, there was a question about the subcarinal lymph node and query significance. It was small lymph nodes. Um, so the treatment was continued. Uh, he tolerated treatment well, except for some financial difficulty. He continued his treatment until September 2021. Um, which show that um, the uh, lesion in the base of car uh, F, F, uh, FDG has disappeared and the one in the subcarinal um, limb node has also disappeared. He completed his cycle six chemo in March 2021 and continued with PEMRO uh, alone until June 2021. Um, because of the uh, difficulty in traveling, uh, 200 milligram uh, three weekly Pembro was changed to 400 uh, milligram six, three, six weekly, uh, and he continued until November 2021. And after that, um, because subsequent uh, scans show that he has stable disease and his limb node has disappeared, so he refused to continue the treatment and just con request for follow up. And in recent scan, he still, his disease still uh, maintained the same. So that's all um, uh, my case sharing. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully, we will see better horizon for our uh, SEC head and neck uh, patients. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Wanzamana, for the excellent talk. We've got uh, three questions. I think we just start cracking on. The first question is, immunother is immunotherapy used to in the adjuvant setting to prevent recurrence and metastasis? For at, those the moment, 
<laughs> because the, uh, the 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 topic is on metastatic um, disease, uh, I do have uh, slides um, for the adjuvant setting. They come. Uh, we have a javelin hundred and uh, Gotek Rich uh, trial, which show that <coughs> the use of uh, immunotherapy in the locally advanced, not adjuvant, locally advanced, in combination with uh, chemo radiotherapy, there's no uh, significant uh, result. In adjuvant setting, however, we are still waiting for the uh, trials that, that has been going on, and so far, the result is not ready yet. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's another question regarding uh, does the patient's PDL1 expression status or their tumor have any correlation with Pembro or Nivolumab uh, overall response rate or treatment success rate? I think you touched on this in the talk. Yeah, um, the higher the uh, PDL1 expression, uh, the better the response rate. Um, the <coughs> based on the um, graph shown by the CPS score of uh, 20 uh, that gave survival rate of wait, um, 14, uh, 15 months versus 10.7 months. And for those patients with lo slightly lower CPS score of uh, more than one, uh, the median survival of uh, 12 months versus 10 months. So the higher the CPS score, the better the, the response rate. Okay, just a couple more questions before we end at nine. Uh, <clears throat> other than PDL1 status, do you also look at tumor mutational burden, MSI as an indication or predictor of uh, response to immune checkpoint inhibitors? Uh, for other uh, tumor sites, yes, uh, but not um, in the head and neck at the moment. Okay, and finally, if you don't mind sharing, what is the cost of pembrolizumab and is it allocated in the blue book uh, as a standard formulary uh, medication? The answer is no. The cost of pembrolizumab is about uh, eighteen to nineteen thousand. Oh no! In in the government setup, about seventeen to eighteen thousand per cycle, uh, per vial actually. But they do have a compassionate program. You pay one cycle, uh, one vial. You get a second vial, vial free. One vial about hundred uh, milligram. Normally, for per cycle, patient require 200 milligram. So basically, per cycle, patient pay about 17 to 18,000. Excluding the cost of chemotherapy. If, if they get treatment in the government setup, chemotherapy will be free. Thank you, Prof. So I think other than the immune-related adverse events that we commonly see, financial toxicity is also a huge uh, toxicity of immunotherapy uh, for all tumor subsites. Um, thank you very much for all the questions from the floor. I would like to thank Prof. Wanzamania and the audience for attending today's webinar and have a great day ahead. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.